Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Tree of Life. A special warm welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online as well. Today is the third Sunday in Advent, and, and in God's Word and in our songs today, we are encouraged to be patient as we wait for Christ's coming again. Uh, we know of what our Savior can do. We know what his second coming will bring, and, and we eagerly anticipate that coming. Uh, but, but our scripture here today uh, in our worship service this morning reminds us, just be patient. Be patient as God will come again and he will answer our prayers and, and take us to be with him in glory. Uh, our service is printed out in our worship folder and we will begin with our Advent gathering song. I invite you to please stand. May God bless our worship here this morning. So come, come, Emmanuel, come, Emmanuel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. From the Christ who was, who is, and who is to come, grace, light, and peace be with you all. And also with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we enter into this Advent worship, let us be mindful of our need for salvation and prepare the way of the Lord with willing hearts. Let us confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Almighty and merciful Father, I confess to you that I have not always loved you with all my heart. I have pursued my ways instead of your ways. In what I have done and what I have left undone, I have not loved my brothers and sisters as myself. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. I am truly sorry for my sins. I repent of them and beg for your mercy, O Lord. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, who came into the world to save us. Cleanse me from my sins. Release me from my guilt. Grant me your Holy Spirit so that I may amend my sinful life. Come, come, Emmanuel. Come, Lord, have mercy on us, O come. Come, Emmanuel. Come, Emmanuel. Christ, have mercy on us. O oh, come, come, Emmanuel. Come, Emmanuel. Lord, have mercy on us. O oh, come, come, Emmanuel. The Almighty God has been merciful to us and has sent his Son to die for all. For his sake, he forgives us our sins and calls us from darkness to his marvelous light. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, come, Emmanuel. Come, Emmanuel. Oh, be patient, the Lord will come. Come, Emmanuel. Come, Emmanuel. Bring good news to the poor and come, come, Emmanuel. 
three candles remembering Jesus, the light of the world. He came to defeat the prince of darkness. We remember Jesus, who came in answer to his people's prayers. John proclaimed him the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. We hear his call to the light. We light three Advent candles as a sign of our trust and confidence. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Through your word and spirit, may our souls be blessed. We pray. Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus Christ, and come with the good news of your mighty deliverance. Drive the darkness from our hearts and fill us with your light. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Our certain knowledge that the, the earth belongs to the Lord and everything in it um, makes us anticipate his coming again because we, we want to see all that come to fruition. Um, we see fulfillment in, in the words of Isaiah's prophecy written 700 years before Christ came uh, of the, the, the beautiful things he would do to fulfill the promise of the Messiah. A lesson from Isaiah 35. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the, land, the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there, and those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. This is God's word. We join in singing the song of Zechariah. Oh, God. 
guides the feet of pilgrims along the paths of peace. Oh, bless our God and Savior, vessels that never cease. Knowing what we do about Christ's second coming, we our fingers are itching. We, we want it to come right now. But God encourages us in, in uh, our second lesson from James 5 to be patient. To be patient for that day that when, when what we see will be what we know. James writes, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. This is God's word. We join in singing stanzas one and four of hymn eight, Come, O Precious Ransom, Come. Come, O Precious Ransom, Come, only hope for sinful mortals. Come, O Savior of the respect for the gospel, please stand. Our gospel for this third Sunday of Advent is taken from Matthew chapter 11, beginning with the second verse. This will serve as the basis for our sermon later on. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, a prophet, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the gospel of our king. We join in confessing our faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated and the children are invited to come forward for the children's message. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Scooch, scooch. Here you go. Here you go. There you go. Top on up. Top on up. All right. Are you guys excited? Yes. What's almost here? Christmas. Christmas. Jesus' birthday. Jesus' birthday. Yeah. Yeah. You've seen this the past couple Sundays? You know what this is called? The Advent. Yeah, Advent, Advent wreath, and we have all these different candles up here, and and each of these candles help us help us focus our attention onto something coming. What's the white candle mean? What's that mean? You just said it. What is Jesus it? Jesus' birthday. Jesus' birthday. Yeah. So all these candles help us count down till Jesus' birthday. Okay. And today we lit two purple ones and a pink one. The pink one stands for the word rejoice. Now, rejoice. Why do you think we we rejoice as we wait for Jesus' birthday? Why is that a good day? Are your birthdays good days? It's your birthday too. That's because great. Because you get presents. Okay, because you get presents. That's right. You get presents when it's your birthday. And wait, but on Jesus' birthday, do you know what he did? He brought presents for the world. What present did he give the whole world when he came? Why did he come? What? To take away our sins. To take away all of our sins. That Jesus was God's present to the world. That he promised a Savior would come. Someone to take all of our sins away when Jesus would die on the cross. Make us holy and perfect so we can go to heaven someday. All right. So let's... Let's, let's rejoice this Advent season as we look forward to the coming of Jesus because that birthday of Jesus means that our salvation and our home in heaven is secured and all our sins are taken away, okay? So let's fold our hands and pray. Dear God, we, we worship with happy hearts today, with joyful hearts, uh, as we look forward to your son's first coming and also to his coming again. Give us that, that attitude of joy in our hearts as we hear every time we open up our Bibles of your message of love and the free forgiveness we have in Jesus. We ask all this in his name. Amen. Okay, you guys can go sit back down now or you can go back with Miss Dory for Kids Church. Okay? And we'll continue our worship service with our hymn of the day. Amen. 
God's grace, his mercy, and peace be yours in abundance. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The words for our consideration are taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11. Please allow me just to read a few of those verses again. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. This is God's word. Please bow your heads for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, a few years ago, a couple of my friends went on a trip to Israel for a couple days. And they said it was amazing. I got so excited about it that, that I, I started to plan a, a trip of my own to go over there. Uh, called my dad about it and was telling him, oh, they said it was great, Dad, it was awesome. I'm, I'm saving my pennies. I'm going. It's going to be fantastic. I was a little surprised when, when he said that he had no desire <coughs> to go over there. What gives? Dad, we're talking about the Holy Land here. This is... This is Nazareth. This is where Jesus grew up. This is the Sea of Galilee where Jesus preached. This is Bethlehem where he was born. This is Calvary where he was crucified. What are you talking about? You don't want to go see this dad. You were a pastor for almost 40 years. How could you not want to go and see where our Savior did his ministry, where he did his work? I couldn't believe it. He said... Mark, it's not that I'm, I'm too old, um, but, and he's not. They still tra my, he and my mom still travel, but they're actually in Germany right now visiting one of my brothers. They, they've been to Europe a couple times. Uh, they've traveled all across the country. He said, it, it's not that I'm concerned about my personal safety uh, of being in, in that area with the, the climate that it's at. He, he said, it's this. I've pictured all those places in my mind a certain way for about 60 years. I know what the Sea of Galilee looks like in my mind. I know what the mountaintops look like in my mind. And I'm afraid that if I go over there, I'm going to be disappointed that it's not going to meet my expectations. I got it then. I, I understood. You can relate to that too, right? You remember the first time you maybe went and saw Mount Rushmore? That's it? Or the Statue of Liberty? thought it'd be bigger. Expectations are funny, aren't they? You hear about that, that, that really classy restaurant that everybody's raving about. Oh, you get so big portions and the food's so good and then you go and you try it out and you leave with your taste buds disappointed and your, your stomach's still growling. There's that, that movie that's coming out. You can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see it in 3D. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be the best. And then you walk away two hours later wondering why you just wasted the last two hours of your life and 20 bucks. Expectations are funny. How many of you, when you, when you, you started out your first year of college, you signed up for some courses, after a couple weeks, you ended up dropping one or two of them? Anybody? Yeah, I did. 
those, that class sounded really exciting, sounded really cool, and then, ugh, that's what this is all about? How many of you have changed jobs since you graduated from high school or college? Still a couple. Now, granted, it might have been because of uh, different circumstances, but I'm sure some of you, you changed your job because, uh, grew discontent. It wasn't what you had, it didn't, it wasn't what you'd wanted it to be. You were looking for something different. You maybe even changed a whole different field. Expectations are funny. We all had different expectations of what married life was going to be like, right? Different things we, Kathy, you were going to expect from Jack, right? Diff different things, Marty, you were going to expect from Kathy. And you find out, huh? What, 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 what's going on here? That's not what this is supposed to be like. Any of you ladies buy when you were pregnant what to expect when you're expecting? <laughs> Did that tell you every single detail of what was going on? Or were there maybe a few surprises? <laughs> Scott, you remember what it was like being a kid, right? So you thought, oh, I can do this whole parenting thing. But I'm sure three girls never threw you any curveballs as, as they were growing up. We have all these different expectations about what we think things are going to be like. But then reality turns out to be something completely different. Think, think about this time of year. There's the, it's the Christmas season. We, oh, we have all these expectations for, oh, this Christmas party is going to be so fun. It's going to be great. And that's kind of a letdown. That wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be. You, you got that gift picked out that you think is going to make Courtney's eyes just light up and maybe draw a squeal of glee. <laughs> and then she goes, ugh, thanks. Appreciate it. You have that toy picked out that you, you knew is going to entertain those two for months and months on end, but then maybe it loses its novelty after a few days. We have all these different expectations, but oftentimes the reality doesn't, doesn't click, doesn't match up with it, does it? What can we expect from Jesus? I'm sure if you ask around, you'd hear some, some different answers. And, and some of those answers would be based on what, what he tells us, but I'm sure many of them would not be. Well, I expect Jesus to do this for me. I expect him to do that. Well, what we're going to do this morning is look at what his word says this morning and what he tells us we can expect from him. We pick up again with John the Baptist, but uh, like we were last week, except he's done kind of a 180 in his ministry. Uh, no longer is he preaching to the thousands upon thousands in the wilderness and, and performing baptism after baptism in the Jordan River. Now we find him this morning sitting in one of King Herod's dark dungeon cells. John had preached his message, which you could sum up in one word. Anybody? Repent. Repent. And, and John fearlessly preached that message to King Herod, much like other preachers and prophets before him and preachers and prophets after him. And what happened was the same. He was thrown into jail. He went to Herod and said, Repent, King Herod, for what you're doing. Herod had actually stolen his brother's wife to be his own. Repent. Repent. Turn from your sinfulness. But instead of, of, of turning from that sin and finding forgiveness in Christ, like people often do, Herod got angry, and he threw John into jail. That's when we pick up with, with where Matthew brings us in chapter 11. He says, when John was in prison, when John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? The days were pretty dark and dreary for John. Uh, disappointment. Maybe some doubt. Remember, he, he had preached that message, repent, repent, repent. Why? Because a judge is coming. Justice is coming. But John's sitting in jail. That's not justice. It seems like injustice, doesn't it? Why, is it seem, why are the wicked prevailing when, and, and I, your faithful servant, your proclaimer, your forerunner, am rotting in jail? John says, go ask him if we're supposed to expect someone else because 
John was having doubts about Jesus because Jesus wasn't doing what he had expected him to do. Where is, where's Jesus? Where's the guy that I, I talked about last week? Where the guy that was going to, uh, that was going to have the axe already at the root of the tree and, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into fire. Where's the guy that had his winnowing fork in his hand and would clear the threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire? John's wondering, where's the guy with the axe? Where's the guy that's going to, to burn and punish? Where is the Messiah? Because he's not doing what Jesus wasn't doing what he thought he was going to do. Even John, John the Baptist, whom Jesus says in our scripture lesson, among those born of women has not risen anyone greater. Even John was a sinful human being. Even John doubted his faith at times. John wasn't the only one that... that didn't quite get why Jesus was going to do what he did or, or, or what his job was going to be. What did, the, what did the Jews think Jesus' job was, or the Messiah's job? What was he supposed to do? Free him from Rome. Make Israel into the, the superpower that it once was during the time of King David and Solomon. We're, we got to overthrow the Roman Empire. What happened when Jesus said, ah, that's not what I came here to do? People got disenchanted with him walked away, turned away. Some even turned on him, got angry. His disciples even, Lord, at this time, are you going to restore the kingdom of heaven? They, they still didn't quite get it, what his job was. How about today? What do people expect from Jesus? You, know, you, you poke around different Christian churches, you can find a variety of answers. I I've read books, I've seen, seen uh, television preachers proclaim that if you believe in Jesus strong enough, you believe in him hard enough, your back problem and your knee problem would go away. Well, it didn't go away, Kathy. I, believe, I think you believe in Jesus, but eh, you weren't believing in him hard enough. Your faith wasn't strong enough. Is that what we can expect from Jesus? Oh, well, you know, if you believe in Jesus, if you follow Christ, your life is going to have all sorts of financial security. You're never going to worry about money ever again. I think you all believe in Jesus, but I'm sure there's been times where the economic uncertainty has, has caused some butterflies in your stomach. I've heard some people say, well, Jesus wants me to be happy. And they use that as an excuse to justify sinful behavior. They use it as a license to sin. What about you? What, what do you expect from Jesus? The, people often expect things, but the expectation doesn't meet what actually Jesus promises. Do you expect that because you follow Christ, your life is going to be pain-free? You're never going to be made to suffer or or have any hurt inflicted on your life? Do you believe that because you follow Christ, because you believe in Jesus, you're never, ever going to worry about money? Do you believe that because you believe in Jesus, your marriage is going to be one long honeymoon? Do you believe that because you believe in Jesus, because you bring the kids to church, they're never going to bring you any, any sort of grief? Do you believe that because you believe in Jesus, all your prayers will be answered the way you want them to be? Because you believe in Jesus, every decision that you make, it, it, you're going to feel the Holy Spirit and know that he's, he's pushing you in a certain direction? Do we believe that because we all believe in Jesus, boy, we're always going to get along because we're all brothers and sisters in Jesus, aren't we? Do we believe that because we believe in Jesus, because we proclaim Christ crucified, boy, our, our, our church is always going to be packed. People are going to be barging through the doors to hear, what is Tree of Life talking about? We want to know. We need to hear this gospel. Oftentimes people have these expectations of what they think Jesus is, who he is, what he's going to bring them. And when those expectations aren't met, when he doesn't do what we think he ought to or what we think he's going to, 
we begin to doubt. Is this right? Am I going on, on the right way? It, are, are we doing what we're supposed to be doing? We find ourselves sitting next to John the Baptist asking the question, are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect someone else? When I had those feelings of hurt, when, when my marriage has some tough spots, when, when my kids aren't listening to me, when it doesn't seem like my prayers are being answered, when I, I'm not feeling the Holy Spirit, when, when brothers and sisters are backstabbing me, when, when, when things aren't going right in my life, what? Satan tries to use that to inflict some doubt. Eh. Eh. Is this right? Take heart, brothers and sisters in Christ, and scatter those thoughts of doubt. Scatter those seeds of, of, of unbelief and distrust in your Lord and Savior and listen. Listen to what he says you can expect from him. Listen to what he says who he is. When John's faith was rattled, and it, it was, he was sitting in jail, things didn't seem to be going right. Jesus wasn't doing what he expected. He didn't turn to someone else, didn't look somewhere else for answers. He went straight to the horse's mouth. He sent his disciples to ask him that question, and Jesus did not disappoint. Listen again to what Jesus said. Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. You see how Jesus reassured John's faith? Jesus quotes to him Isaiah 35, our first lesson for today. He says, one, John... What did Isaiah prophesy 700 years ago that the Messiah would do? Okay, he's going to make the, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the blind see, the dead be raised. John, what am I doing right now? John, you heard about how I raised Jairus' daughter, didn't you? John, you, you heard about how I stopped that funeral procession at Nain and raised that widow's son. John, you heard about how I, I, I put my fingers in that man's ear and I, I touched his tongue and I said, Ephatha, be open. And it was. John, you heard about how I, I gave that paralytic his legs back. John, you, you know what I'm doing. You've heard about it. You've seen me fulfill time and time again the promises, the description of the Messiah who would come and save the world. John, blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. You're fine. Your face in the right spot. I am he. When things don't turn out the way that we expect them to, when, when, when Jesus doesn't seem to be answering our prayers the way we would have him, or, or, or things, the wicked seem to prosper and we seem to perish, don't listen to those, those whispers of doubt from your sinful nature or from Satan. Turn again and look to, look to your Savior. And remind your faith once again of the, the myriad of miracles and, and the impeccable preaching that he did while he was here on earth. Remind yourself, most of all, of the voluntary death he suffered for the sake of your sins. Remind yourself of the triumphant resurrection that, that he, when he rose on Easter morning, assuring you of his promises of love and free forgiveness and everlasting life. The question still needs to be answered, though. What, what can we expect from Jesus? We can expect from him to be who he says he is. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. You can expect from Jesus someone who will, who will gather you, 
who will be your caregiver, who will guide you through all your ways. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You can expect that Jesus will strengthen and encourage your faith as you go to him in his word and sacrament. You can expect that there he will feed you and light your faith on fire. Jesus said, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. You can trust that Jesus is by your side and he knows what painful things you're going through and dealing with right now. He knows because he's been there the entire time. He's never left you and he never will. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You can expect that your faith hasn't been in vain. That you're on the right track. That you're on the road to heaven. That you're at right with your heavenly Father through Jesus' sacrifice of perfect blood. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. You can expect that through faith in Jesus you have life eternal. You have a home in heaven. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servants here, and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness ever. How you favor the weak and lowly one, humbling the proud of heart. You have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servants here and blessed me all my life through. Please be seated. At this time, our ushers will be handing out our friendship registers. We ask that you please sign those to mark your visit here with us this morning. Those of you who are worshiping with us online, please be sure to sign our online guest book as well. After that, we have the opportunity to bring our offerings of thanks to the Lord. <clears throat>
Please stand for the prayer of the church. In our prayers this, this uh, morning, we include a, a prayer for our college students as the end of their semester winds down uh, as they continue with their studies. Uh, and we also uh, pray for all of those who are going, going through a time of stress. We take our request to the Lord. Eternal Father, throughout the centuries, you repeated and affirmed your promise to send the offspring of the woman to crush the serpent's head. Through your prophets of old, you continually directed the eyes of your people to the advent of their Savior. We praise you, O Lord, for keeping your promise and sending your Son to destroy the works of the devil. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of our King, use your mighty word to shatter any thoughts of doubt that rise up in our minds. Continue to hold before our eyes the birth of your Son as the promise you made to the world fulfilled. You sent your Son to redeem us from sin. Let this good news be our joy and our strength. Use it to cheer those who are lonely and encourage those who are despairing and, and give hope to those who are fearful. In these days before Christmas, help keep before, your, uh, before our eyes the message of, of Christ crucified and the forgiveness we have in him. Heavenly Father, Lord of the Church, we ask that you especially be with our college students as they finish up the semester and, and end their exams. Allow them to perform on their tests and exams to the best of their abilities, the abilities which you have given to them. Uh, as all college students begin to break for this winter mark, we ask that you keep them safe as they travel to their homes and, and take them then back to school safely. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you also be uh, with those who are, are under times of stress, stress this month. Continue to uh, hold before their eyes the, the message of your love and your free forgiveness uh, and, encourage, and continue to encourage their hearts and allow them to trust in you more and more during these difficult times. Hear us, Lord, also as we bring you our private petitions in silent prayer. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, in your grace, in your power, and in your glory. It's in your name that we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our God generously comes to us with forgiveness in very tangible means as we participate in Holy Communion. Because the Bible has convinced us that Jesus' body and blood are truly present in the Lord's Supper, and that receiving the sacrament together is a public statement of complete oneness in our beliefs, we now invite to the Lord's Supper members of this congregation and other wells and ELS churches. Our congregation doesn't want to be presumptuous and put you in the position of stating your agreement with our convictions before we've had an opportunity to explain them. May God the Lord be with you all. May he be with you too. We lift our hearts in praise and song to you, Lord God, to you, to thank you, bless and honor you, O holy, gracious Lord, to praise and glorify you, is proper, right, and good. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Through his holy prophets, he promised a king to bring light to those living in darkness and in the shadow of death. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. 
To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me may the peace of the Lord be with you always amen, amen. Jesus Christ, O Lamb of God, you take the whole world sin away. Lord Jesus Christ, O Lamb of God, have mercy on us all, we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, O Lamb of God, you take the whole world sin away. Have mercy on us, hear our plea, and grant to us your peace, we pray. You may be seated and come forward at the direction of our ushers. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sin. Also, take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin. May this strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Also, take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness Take and of drink. All of your sins. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.
and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take and drink. Given it to death this is the true blood of our Lord and of Savior sins. Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace and enjoy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace and enjoy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We stand for the Song of Simeon found on page 16 in our worship folder.
that you provided us with this sacred meal in which we receive you and the life you give. By this eating and drinking, enable and encourage us to keep our promises as you have faithfully kept all your promises to us. Through the same Jesus Christ, who with the Father and the Spirit are one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you.